Many of you know that I was raised in Mormonism, and in Mormonism, they do baptisms for the dead in the temple. And there's a place in scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 where Paul talks about baptisms for the dead. So I want to address that in this video. First of all, Paul is addressing false doctrine. So he's talking about this. He's chastising the Corinthians for false beliefs that they have, such as there is no resurrection. But before we go into reading about this, I want you to think for a moment, what is baptism all about? Why does a person get baptized? What does it signify? What does it represent? Can you get baptized for somebody else any more than you can repent for them? Because baptism is a baptism of repentance. So how are you going to do that for somebody else? That doesn't make a lick of sense. You're baptized when you come to believe, when you're drawn to Christ, and then you repent and you participate in this cleansing ritual, which represents God sprinkling water on you and making you clean. And you do this not just as a representation of being clean, but you do it in conjunction with repentance. Yes, I realize you probably did not learn that in your counterfeit church, but that's what that was. I mean, John was preaching a baptism of repentance, so no one would be preaching any other baptism. He even told the Pharisees when they came to see what was going on, you brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the coming wrath, bear fruit in keeping with repentance. So he was even teaching them that there was some sort of change that needed to occur if you've truly repented. And this has always been preached as a baptism of repentance. Baptism by water, always a baptism of repentance. You cannot repent for someone else. And in fact, I know this was not taught in any counterfeit church either, but you will not receive the atonement that has been made for you if you don't repent. So no one should say, well, there was the Day of Atonement in which the priest was atoning for the Israelites. Uh, okay, yeah, and Jesus atoned for us, and the only way that we receive that is by faith. And faith bears the fruit of our behaviors, our thoughts, our beliefs, and what we profess. That means we obey. That means that if there is faith in our hearts, that's what you're going to see coming out of your right hand, your forehead, and your mouth. So now listen to what Paul says. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you which you received and on which you've taken your stand. By this gospel, you're saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you've believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as fir of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living though some had fallen asleep. Fallen asleep just means they died. Then he appeared to James, then to all of, the, all of the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. Abnormally born because remember that Paul never actually met Jesus uh, when he was in the flesh. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I work harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believe. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there's no resurrection of the dead? If there's no re resurrection of the dead, remember that the Pharisees, by the way, the Pharisees, there were, there were some Pharisees who believed in the resurrection and others who did not believe in the resurrection. So this isn't a new thing. It's not a new false doctrine. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there's no resurrection of the dead? If there's no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are all of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through, man, through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. 
that each in turn, Christ, the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God, the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he has put everything under his feet. Now, when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself, who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him, under him, so that God may be all in all. Now, if there's no resurrection, what will those do who are baptized for the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized for them? So Paul is not... He's not saying anything either way about this. He's not necessarily saying that it's bad to do it, and he's not saying that it's good to do it. But we should recognize that there's no precedent for it in Scripture. We should also recognize what baptism actually means, and that it's not something that can be received for you on, uh, you know, by someone else on your behalf. Any more than your covenant is going to be fulfilled by somebody else on your behalf. Now, those continuing to believe in counterfeit Christianity need to hear that. You need to hear that no Jew in the Middle East is going to bear your covenant for you. We all need to be understanding that. Everyone is required to bear their own covenant. And the word says that even if Noah, Daniel, and Job were in this, you know, town, they could save only themselves, not even their children. So these are all righteous men. How are Noah, Daniel, and Job not able to save their children but certain people are deluded into thinking that they can be baptized for someone who's already passed away. You can't receive any of this for somebody else. What are we? What would we be doing there? Like locking this in? I mean, what are we locking in? That's just absurd. And it, it reduces the entire covenant down to d being dunked underwater. Boy, we're just saving souls over here, aren't we? That's ridiculous. Superficial. It's superficial relationship with that. I mean, I don't even know what they're having a relationship with. I, I really don't. I was going to say the covenant, but I just don't think that they even are comprehending that there's a covenant. So while Paul is not condemning this, he's also not saying that this is a right thing to do. And he's talking about it within the context of uh, clearing up. You guys are, belie are not believing correctly. Now, if there's no resurrection, what will those do who are baptized for the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized for them? And as for us, why do we endanger ourselves every hour? I face death every day. Yes, just as surely as I boast about you in Christ Jesus our Lord. If I fought wild beasts in Ephesus with no more than human hopes, what have I gained? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Come back to your senses as you ought and stop sinning. For there are some people who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. Okay, so only place in scripture where baptism for the dead is mentioned, not mentioned in a way as to say that what they're doing is correct. He's also not necessarily saying that what they're doing is wrong, but he is correcting them on other doctrine that they believe that is contradicting this thing that they're doing. But again, there's no established command or direction or instruction Nowhere else in scripture is it, is it mentioned that you would be baptized for someone else. And also, you know, there was no precedent in scripture for anyone being baptized on another's behalf when John was baptizing or when Jesus' disciples were baptizing. The scriptures do state that everyone needs to be baptized by water and by the Holy Spirit. So now can you be baptized by the Holy Spirit as well for somebody else? I mean, come on. These commands and behaviors are on each individual to undergo in their own covenant. Now, on the other side of that, I've been I was baptized twice in counterfeit Christianity. You want to consider that a real baptism? So I was baptized when I was eight years old in Mormonism, and I was baptized in my 30s in some counterfeit Christian church. And neither one, I don't believe either one was effective because I hadn't repented for anything because it wasn't being taught to me that this was a baptism of repentance. I was being fed a line of baloney about what this was, that I would suddenly come out a new creation. But years later, when God brought me through my actual covenant and repentance, he actually had me go through a process in my own bathtub. Do I need somebody else to baptize me? No, I don't. John the Baptist wasn't baptized by anybody else. He was baptized of heaven. 
So God led me through this process, but it wasn't until I'd been in an active process of repentance for a while. So I don't want you to worry that you need anybody else to do this for you because it's real hard to find anybody who's righteous to even undergo this with. God is able to do this with you. If this is something you genuinely desire, and it is something that is required, you are required to be baptized of water and the Holy Spirit, then do it with God. If that's what you desire, do it with God. But you have to know that you've got to repent. And so, you know, given that we're not able to repent for anybody else, I don't think we're able to get baptized for him. Please discern this message with God.